Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to show you how to use GPT technology for blogging properly. I see a lot of videos that uh, a lot of people are kind of missing the mark on certain points. And if I can try to explain how to use it properly in my point of view and how I personally gain results, as you guys have seen in some of my past videos, I've shown some of my results, some of my income, all these kind of things, then maybe I can kind of uh, give some good uh, con contribution to the space here. So let's go ahead and begin by addressing what you shouldn't do. So first of all, if you're blogging and you decide not to use GPT at all, you're probably, I, I don't want to say wasting your time, but you're, you're definitely uh, behind the mark, right? GPT does help. And you could see uh, I use it clearly a lot. I have a lot of different things going on here. I use it a lot, okay? And it does help increase the speed of your writing. Uh, you could see here even within uh, howtoboosttestosterone.org because we're using Rocket Web Builder, there are any section in the website I can use the same exact technology and have it write AI content for me. In fact, a lot of the content here was written through AI. It's very, very rare that I wrote something manually. Most of the times I'm either removing a little bit, adding to it a little bit, and or... Um, uh, and not or but and uh, reformatting it uh, in many times however um, that's just one aspect right so the first thing is use GPT now let's go ahead and and go into the second thing that you should not be doing is this concept of auto blogging or auto blogging in any kind of way and what is auto blogging auto blogging is simply having the AI write the whole entire job of your website for you. So for example, let's go ahead and jump here and let's go into this topic. So this topic, we haven't wrote any text yet. And the topic is, does eating oysters increase testosterone? If I was to copy this and paste this right into GPT and I would say, write me an article, write me an article for this blog. No matter how good I make the prompt, in fact, you know what, actually, let's go ahead and select this prompt, right? So this is uh, for um, AI PRM, uh, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and use this prompt, right? And I'm going to say, write me an article uh, for eating for this blog topic, okay? And then, boom, and that's the blog topic. Let's just make sure we switch it to GPT-4, for example. If I go ahead and hit enter here. Actually, let me make sure uh, I got the right plugins. So we could use Wolfram, Scholarly, and let's remove the speak one and let's go with, uh, let's go with Wolfram. Let's remove VoxScript. Where is VoxScript here? I know it's here somewhere. I know it was selected. That's why. Um, let's see. VoxScript. Let's go ahead and remove VoxScript and let's use WebPilot instead, right? So we have AI, uh, AI Scholar, uh, WebPilot, and, and uh, Wolfram, right? So I have this topic. I'm going to hit enter. When it writes the article for me, there's going to be, it's not going to be perfect, okay? Even though it's going to be very well written, it's not going to be perfect, and it's not going to be enough, okay? And this is assuming I'm using a very, very good prompt, right, with AI PRM, right? So uh, this is not my prompt. It's really what AI, AI PRM uh, goes into and kind of handles for me. So you're seeing it write content here for me, which is, which is cool. But it's simply not enough to reach the mark of beating your competitors with on Google, right? And this is kind of why I'm against the whole entire auto blogging concept. Auto blogging is nothing more than... Um, essentially adding nothing new to the algorithm. The whole point with blogging, and the reason why I can even have this assessment is because I know what it feels like to blog many, many moons ago, many years ago, without AI of any sort. I remember when we were testing GPT-2, and it was trash. Like, it was complete garbage uh, for AI. And I, I used to always wish, I used to be like, man, I wish there will be a day when there's better AI. And here is that day today. You know, we're in that world now. Um, but this is not, this is on the surface kind of data, right? I need much, much more to write a better blog. Now, don't get me wrong. 
I'm somewhere in the middle of this. I'm not a totally against AI, and I'm not totally for it. Where I'm in the middle is what I do is this. If you want to succeed with blogging and SEO and GPT and te AI technology, you can copy and paste this whole thing and paste it right into your site. For those who have Rocket Web Builder, you know we have the AI built in right here, right? And what you need to do is you need to think of, before the article is even written through AI, you need to think of every single topic that you can go through and and go through essentially through your whole entire blog post. So after this thing is done writing, right, and we'll give it some time, but after it's done writing its article, okay, um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to compare it to my list of topics. So if I have certain questions related to this, right, like, for example, uh, related to the article. So let's say this is all about does oysters eating uh, increase testosterone. Well, first we have to clear what is testosterone right then we have to talk about and this is not in a specific order but let's just bring things up right what is testosterone uh where are oyst what are oysters first of all what are oysters do they differ uh do they differ from clams right uh what makes oysters so special if they do uh boost testosterone um uh, we can also ask another question, like, for example, are there any alternatives? Are there alternatives to oysters for people who have a shellfish allergy, for example? Th there's a lot of different topics that I can go on. And really what I like to do is just for a few minutes, you guys saw me do this for a few seconds, but for a few minutes, I want to write down all kinds of different topics. And it's just all these topics are not for the blog, but they're for me to make sure that I come across every single point discussed in the blog, right? And then what I'll do is just add another container here, add some text, and I'll make sure that this whole entire thing is on my website, right? And so this is... This is it. This is the blog article, right? And I'll copy and paste it. But from there, I'll work on it. I'll add to it because I, I can tell you this is not enough. If I go here and start from the very top where the article actually begins and I copy all of this and I go into here my word counter. So let's type in word counter just like that. And let's paste this in. This is 695 words. In no universe is this enough content for me to rank. And specifically because I have a lower authority, right? In, in not only in Google's eyes, but against my competition. My competition has higher authority. They've been around longer. They generate more traffic. There's no reason for them not to stomp over me in the rankings with this. And if I really want to go that extra mile and I really want to get some traffic when I have less authority, I'm going to have to make up for it in Google's eyes. And Google not only looks at your your one article as a result, but it looks at your whole entire website as a help to the user. So, for example, if I cr create this article, does eating uh, uh, oysters increase testosterone, right? And I have a very well-written article. But let's say in the article, I choose not to recommend some of my other posts that could be somewhat related. In that case, I could potentially be missing out on ranking because you got to think from a Google algorithmic standpoint, right? If I'm as a writer recommending or answering the question, do oysters increase testosterone? Well, let's think about what the reader can potentially ask associated with that. After all their needs are met, they can start asking questions. Well, uh, you know, does eating ground beef increase testosterone does does eating um how does testosterone increase compared to uh meat versus fish uh some uh, beef versus fish so many different things right so i want to be able to provide as much useful content to my reader as possible and Google actually is very specific about this and what they determine useful content and useful content is unique and new content that has been added to what already exists in the algorithms. And you're going to see a lot of people start these challenges on YouTube where they do this auto blogging thing where they, you know, 
create a bunch of articles only through writing blogs. And I'm, and that sounds great. You know, that really does. And it sounds very effective. It sounds very laid back. But the reality is it's going to take some input within your work. I'll give you a perfect example as well. Let's actually go to my website here. These are some articles that I had to, or let's even use the product, right? This was a product that was created, right? It was paid for. It was created. It was done. And this is a portion of the bonus that I'm adding to the algorithm. I'm adding a new element to the algorithm. But when I add this product with in core, you know, in in uh, association is a better word, with the rest of my other articles, and I'm adding more products, and actually I'm going to start selling supplements here soon. When I start doing these things, Google is going to look at it and say, "Wow." This person, and I'm not saying that Google's actually going to do this, but this is an algorithm, right? It's weighing the data, and I'm just giving you the the verbose dialogue of it. Google's going to look at it and say, okay, this person provided the article that was searched by the user, provided alternatives, provided internal links, provided products that are related to the article. People are visiting the site, and they're actually interacting more than the other sites, Hmm, this is a hint. Maybe this article truly performs better than the others. Let's go ahead and test it. So instead of position 16.8, let's test it in position 12.4, right? Or let's position... T- t- uh, the reason why there's a point, like a decimal point, is because they move you up and down throughout the day. But let's just say position 12, right? And then Google says, hmm, they're doing well in position 12, Let's go ahead and test them more. In the meantime, let's say you're the writer and you improve the website a little bit more, a little bit more. You add a little more keywords. You add a little more content. You add a a few images, whatever you do, right, to make it even better. Then Google says, all right, the website is doing good at 12. Let's go ahead and bump them up. Let's test them at 6 or 4. Okay, they're they're doing good at at 6 and 4. They're beating position 5. They're beating position 8. They're beating position 7. They take you off the algorithm completely for a few days. It happens. It's normal. Then they put you back in. They test you at at the same position. Maybe they test you at position two. They're testing. They're testing. And the reason why these testings have to happen is because you have less domain authority than pretty much everyone out there. And I'm speaking for myself. I'm not necessarily speaking for you guys. I'm speaking for myself with this blog specifically, right? You guys have seen the traffic. You guys have seen the income it generated, the sales it generated, this website. But this website has no domain authority. How do you think that happens? Uh, Some of the topics that we write about does have competition by some very uh, domain authority heavy sites. um, And Sometimes we can reign supreme over them and get some traffic that they don't get. And the reason why that I could do that, right, is not because I have some sort of magical power, but it's two things. It's the effort of the blog post, doing a really, really good blog post, in in addition to the rest of the site, things being developed to it, along with, so really three things, right, along with providing time to allow Google to test my position. So if you're thinking about writing blog posts with AI, the best thing you can do is allow AI to do most of the heavy lifting, right? But there are also things that you need to make sure that you cover and you need to add to, and also you need to expand upon. I'll give you a good example. Let's go ahead and take a look here. So here it says studies on oysters and testosterone, and then says several studies link between zinc intake and testosterone levels as oysters are rich of zinc they could potentially boost testosterone levels however many of these studies have been conducted on animal or in vitro research and is confirmed and and is needed to be confirmed with humans so this is an example of something that i would not put in an article whatsoever right maybe i would reformat this in fact i would actually go i would take this just like this i would copy it and i would go to my blog right let's add a container for this we already have one actually I would paste it here, and then I would just go over here and hit improve. So I would go to my AI, and I would hit improve like this, right? And then what it will do is it might even shorten it a little bit, might make it more succinct, um, might explain it better. But then what I would do is I would delete the portion here about the humans, right? Or even leave it. It doesn't matter. But then what I would do is I would start listing other studies that are relevant, right? So just because a study is not related to a human being doesn't mean it's not relevant, right? So other studies that are 
relevant. And I might title it something else. I might do a little keyword research, whatever. But hopefully you guys are getting the point of what I'm trying to say. And I'm going to drag my text here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and you guys have seen, I used uh, Wolfram and I used Scholar AI. And I'm going to say, do research, or let me actually do this. Let me say, list out the nutrient profile of oysters. Mention the vitamins and minerals compared to compared to the daily need, right, of two thousand calorie uh, two thousand calorie uh, metabolic needs to the daily need of. Uh, uh, and then what we're going to do, sorry guys, I'm just thinking of two things at once. And then I'm going to say, mention how much of these vitamins and minerals are existent within the serving size that correlates to 2,000 calories, something like that. And what it's going to do is it's going to provide me, like I said, that all that information. It's using Wolfram to do that. And then after it provides me these vitamins and minerals, then I can lead into, and this is just an example, for the studies. And I'll say, okay, well, uh, oysters are, are heavy in zinc or, or whatever, the, whatever the minerals or whatever the case may be, right? And let's see here. It says single fried oyster, total calories, 61, total fat cholesterol, sodium, uh, carbs, protein, vitamin A. Okay, so let's say vitamin A. And I'll say here, and I'll take here vitamin A, and I'll, I'll tell it, do research, do research on a study that uses a, that uses vitamin A, vitamin A, and niacin. In combination, see if it provides any results, okay? Something like this. And I think with with the past research that I do, niacin does have some sort of uh, health benefit effect. That's actually pretty useful. And then we're going to go ahead and, and it will do some Google Scholar research. So I can say here, now I can start pulling up studies that are relevant because these... I guess you can say nutrients or chemicals or whatever you want to call them, magnesium, niacin, vitamin A. Um, they're essentially elements on the periodic table, right? I can, t not vitamin A, but I can take these, right? And I can conjure studies based on them. So here it says, uh, critical appraisal of laro, I don't even know what that says, an extended release niacin combination in management of uh, something uh, hyper- cholesterolemia. Wow, that's interesting. And then I might I might even say, if this is too crazy, uh, like, for example, this one, pharmacologic therapy on niacin and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I might use this in my study, uh, in my blog. It's relating to fatty alcohol, uh, fatty liver disease, and then I might explain how fatty liver disease relates to my blog. And this is kind of different ways that you can not only soup up your blog post, but how you can beat the competitor. Because Google has different webs of keywords, and I'll explain what that means in just a second. But I'll say here, I could say uh, link and explain, link and explain studies that, if this was a total fail, assuming this was a total fail, I would say link and explain studies that relate to uh, testosterone levels and let's say niacin, right, niacin. And it will do that for me, okay? And that's an example. Now, while it's writing this, I want to explain to you guys the web that, that Google uses of keywords of understanding, all right? This is how algorithms work. So let's go ahead and pull up a whiteboard here. And let's use any one of these. Let's see. Let's click on this one. All right. So Google has a constant understanding of certain webs of platforms. I'm going to use semicircles for this to kind of describe what I'm talking about. So here you have the first semicircle. 
And the first semicircle represents the actual word that's going to be used within the article. We talk about this on cash cow niche sites. Let me let me actually pull this up. Cash cow niche sites. When we talk about writing a blog post, right, whether it's the GPT-4 or even the super blog post, the first thing you have to do is you have to establish the main keyword or the main topic of conversation. And the main topic in the co- of conversation and the main keyword are synonymous. In this case, right? I can give you an example, like for this article, right? Does eating raw liver improve testosterone? What do you think the main keyword is? Just take a guess. It's does eating raw liver increase testosterone? You could see actually right here that this is that article and I've added it in my slug, right? And that's important because I'm telling Google, I'm saying, hey, this is what I want to rank for. This is what I want to compete for. And so that's the main keyword. I'm just going to write K, uh, KY here just for the kind of understanding. Then what you have here are words associated with that main keyword, right? So let's actually go here with a different color. Let's go with red. And this represents like level number one. Let's go ahead and, and do another semicircle here. And Google's algorithm says, okay, all the other blogs in the algorithm must have, these are the, this is the must have, uh, uh, semicircle must have. These are the must have keywords that are highly associated with this keyword. And we can think of some of them. Like, for example, if I'm just looking at this, um, we have the word like, let's say raw liver, cook liver, um, uh, you know, liver, testosterone, boost testosterone, uh, things like that. So those are keywords that are highly, highly associated, right? That have to exist within the article. What are the next level keywords? These are the next level which make your website better right so if if you don't have this level of keywords so let's put it this way uh let's get the green here if you don't have this level keywords associated with the main keyword in your article there's no chance you're ranking in the top 10 top 20 even the top 30 you're not going to rank okay let's go to the next level and for this color let's use blue the next level here is there must have if you want to rank past like let's say position 12 or 14 like starting to get early into those high rankings um and not that 12 or 14 is high because you're not really going to generate that much traffic if any uh, but generally that's when they start giving you more trust because you got to remember the higher you rank the more trust google is giving you and so if we go over here what are the next level of keywords well maybe vitamin d is related right but it's related on a lower tier Right, so there are tiers, and and these semicircles, I want you to think of them as tiers, levels of importance. Right, so vitamin D, cholesterol, right, uh, zinc. These are words that might vitamin A, copper, whatever. These things might be associated. Right, then we have the next level. Right, so the next level might be after the whole entire blog is written. Right. What's the next tier of keywords? Maybe we're recommending more testosterone boosting articles. Maybe that might be it. Um, in terms of a keyword research kind of standpoint, maybe we can talk about workouts, how to increase testosterone naturally. That might be a keyword that might be associated that Google might be looking for. And all of these tiers, right? You want to be able to expand as far as possible to these tiers and have that content existent on that specific web page. This is why a lot of bloggers who are successful, they'll say it's very, very hard to write a ranking article that has less than like 800 words. It's very hard to do that because Google, like I said, has so much information out there that knows what's related and what's not related. So for example, if I create an article on the best credit card for teenage, uh, maybe not teenagers, let's say college students, because I definitely want to make money, right? Teenagers don't have money, but let's just say college students, right? And that's the, the ranking or, or the or the demographic I want to target. The best credit card for college students, right? If I write that article, there's going to be certain keywords in these tiers that Google's looking for, like Visa, MasterCard, American Express, right? That might be the immediate tier, Maybe then they're, then they're looking like in the later tiers for me to recommend certain bank accounts. Maybe they're looking for certain programs that uh, for college students, certain things that can help benefit them. And there's different ways around this, right? So what you want to understand is that the more you expand with these keywords, the more you're increasing that web that Google is looking for. And Google, this is called 
relevance by association. So the way this works is Google has an algorithm of a keyword and that keyword has other keywords associated and you're going to be deemed relevant to the keyword by associating those other keywords to your blog. It's called relevance by association. Very, very important. And that's why you need to include certain keywords in your blog. It only makes sense. And that's why, and I'm sorry you guys had to see that, but that photo, that's why, right, these certain blog posts, right, that are just purely written off of the first round that that uh, these AIs produce, right, they don't provide enough of these web layers or these tier layers of keywords. They don't provide enough content to get the job done, which is exactly why you have to go in. You have to manually think about more topics that can be discussed. And hey, maybe you can even ask the AI. You can say, hey, what are more topics that can be discussed in this article potentially? All these different things. But you have to understand that this is going to touch on the surface. It's going to maybe do, maybe if you're lucky, for 50 to 40 percent on the first hit this is why once again all those auto bloggers right the guys who who you know preach auto blogging it, they're gonna die really really quick in terms of their blogs unless they go in and manually do some sort of work to adapt and to create a better post because google's gonna look at it and say you know what on the first maybe tier or two they have all the keywords necessary let's go ahead and put this guy in in rank number 30 well if you're in rank 30 or rank 20 even you're gonna get a lot of different traffic, maybe even rank 40, excuse me, you're not going to get a lot of traffic, you're going to get a lot of impressions, and they might boast, and they might sit there and say, I've got 120 impressions, I've got X amount of impressions in X amount of time, but as we've said before, impressions don't solve the problem for bloggers, can you pay your bills off of impressions, no, you can't, you need income, you need traffic, and so this kind of just goes to kind of fulfill that point, is that if you're serious about this, you need to add more to it. Auto blogging or just sitting there and creating the content, right, that the AI has and just copying and pasting without really thinking on it is not enough. And um, obviously, auto blogging is a little different. Auto blogging is simply when you just give it the topic and it will essentially just create the website, the, the articles on the site. Um, and I actually have a whole video on auto blogging, but. Uh, Hopefully, this kind of brings this topic home, all right? I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, this video was beneficial. I'll see you soon. Peace out. Bye.